Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm at Fire Rock Country Club with Mike Malaska. Hey, Mike. Good to see you Good again. Good to see you again. Uh, Mike has been putting out some really awesome content on his YouTube channel, so I wanted to talk to him. We're going to cover a gamut of different things today, but the first thing I think we should start at the beginning, Mike, where um, my friend Brandon, who's here with us, he's been playing golf for one year. And I think in Be Better Golf, it's sometimes it gets into the weeds of the, like, people have been playing for a long time looking to get better. But the most searched thing, and I think really what even golfers of all ability can benefit from, is to learn like, okay, if you're just starting and you have no idea what to do. Yeah. But you want to be kind of have a plan to get good over, because you will be golfing over the next year. Give us kind of a plan of action for beginners. Well, the first thing, you know, you've got to, you've got to, get with somebody and you've got to get a grip. You've got to get a grip on the club, which you've got to figure out, how am I going to put my hands on this thing? Because the game is really played with your hands. Contrary to a lot of the things that you hear about is you've got to get your hands on the club correctly so you have control of the face. I mean, basically, I play this game with my hands. So there's how the club face fits in my hands. I'm holding the club like this. Okay. So if I, t if I could take people and have them hold the club like that in, my, in their hands mm -hmm. and then say, okay, if I want this club to hit the ball lower than it's designed to hit it, I would take loft off the face. If I want to hit it higher, I'd add loft. If I want to curve it to the left, I'd turn it this way. If I curve to the right, I go this way. It fits in my left hand like this. Okay, so then there's low and there's high and there's left and there's right. Now, if I take and I put both hands on here, I go, here's low, see what the club shaft did. There's higher, here's to the left, and here's to the right. So the reality is when I put my hands on this club, on this grip, I take a hold of that grip, but really I'm not holding a grip. What am I holding? I'm holding the club face. So. What we're trying to learn here is we're trying to learn how our hands control the face. Now we could spend a lot of time on what's the correct grip and not, and you know that would be a whole other thing. But once you get your hands on the club, now it's a matter of with my hands there, what do I have to do with my hands to run the club face into the ball square, to make the ball curve to the left, to make the ball curve to the right, to make it go lower, to make it go higher. So now that's the, that's the very first and most important thing. And then you have to start making little swings where you actually start to control the face. Okay. So once I get people, I say, okay, now we've got a grip. You have your hands on there. Now, okay, now what are we going to do with that face if I wanted to use that grip and I'm going to run that club face into the ball and I want to make the ball go to the left? What am I going to have to do with the face? So I make it go to the left. Then I make it go to the right. And, and so you're, you're constantly just learning how your hands make the face work. And that's, if you can't do that at slow speeds, if you don't have a grip and control of the face, where you can run it into the ball and start making your hands control the face, then all the global big swing body picture thing really doesn't matter. Okay. Do you think people go too big too soon? They go way too big, way too fast. Okay. I mean, when I'm out here practicing, I mean, when I start out, the first things I start out with are little teeny swings, running the club face into the ball, making the ball, hit it low, hit it high, do little shots. I mean, that's where I start. Well, how long have you been playing golf, Mike? 55, 60 years. And something you told me when we were walking up talking about doing this video, you said, every day is almost like you're starting starting from scratch like you present you you act like a beginner yeah every yeah. single time you just first get on the every day when i come out the first few things i do is little teeny chip shots to get a feel for how each hand works how the face works i make sure my grips on there correctly i get control of the face hit little short shots and then i very gradually build my swing to waist high to waist high i start adding more body motion and more swing I go to longer clubs. That's how I build my swing every single day. And if I could get beginners, people who are coming to the game, yeah. to start and build their swings that way. Every day. Every single yeah. day. Every time they came out, they'd get significantly better and better. The problem is they come out and within one or two swings, they have this club out with random grips, with random motions, with no control of this, trying to figure out why am I not getting any better? Okay. 
And this is one of the few games where you're not penalized that much for no control of the face. If you go skiing, if you're not very good at your edge control, you're not going to take on the double black diamond run with the big smoggles. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. If you try to play tennis, if you're not very good with the racket, you can't have the ball coming at you at 100 miles an hour and play tennis. No. If you go to play baseball, if you're not very good with the bat, you're not going to have somebody throwing it at you at 70 miles an hour. Yeah. Okay, so this game, people come to this game, they tee a ball up, and they swing this at full speed. Well, that's like a ball coming at you at 100 miles an hour or full speed with a baseball. Yeah. And you're wondering why you're not very good. Well, you would start in baseball on a tee. Mm -hmm. Well, that's virtually no speed. You start in tennis, you just take a racket and you learn how to run the racket into the ball. Yeah, you know, like bounce it to yourself and hit yeah, it. Yeah, you know, bounce easy. it and hit it. Yeah. So you start easy. You skiing, you start snowplow, learning how to use your edges. The better you get at your edges, the more hill you can take on. Yeah, pizza and french fries, I think I heard yeah. once. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. so, so, so this game becomes get your grip on there consistently, get control of the face. That, that little drill right there where you get your grip and where you start to understand that that club face is your hands. I mean, that's how I play golf right there. I mean, I'm basically mm -hmm. playing like this. Yeah. So when I make a swing, the club face is my hands. So I can take the club back, and you could call any shot you want. When I, when I take the club back, you could say, hit a draw. Well, then as I come down, I just turn the face over a little bit, and that hits a draw. You could say, hit it lower. I'll take loft off the face. You could say, hit it higher. I'll add loft. Right. You could say, hit a fade. I'll fade it. So I can do anything I want to do with that face to make that ball curve. Sure. So if I could get people to get their hands on there and learn how to run the club face into the ball, controlling the face with your hands, then you start building the motion of your body. Now you have something. If but, you start with no hands, right. no face control, moving your body, your swing might look good, but you can't hit it. You can't play. Sure. Um, when you do this initial thing, you like it off of a tee. It just yes. makes it simpler. But I wanted to ask you, okay, so as they've been playing for a while and they want to start to, to develop like they're getting the face, but now they want to start to develop like that low point control to be able to hit the ball and then the earth right? rather than uh, well, talk about that concept even, because I think for true beginners, they might not even really realize wh uh, what impact should look like, and then how should they start to learn to control low point? Okay. You want to play golf initially off a tee. Why? Well, because what you're trying to do, there's, there's this pendulum called a swing, and the ball's sitting here. If you put the ball up on a tee, if your pendulum happens to catch the ground a little early, you still can hit the ball fairly well. If it hits a little late, you can catch it fairly well. If the ball's on the ground, you have to catch the ball, then catch the ground. That means your angle of approach has to be almost perfect. At first, you don't want to do that because you want to play off a tee, so you're building your confidence. So if you happen to hit a little behind it or a little out in front of it, you still hit a pretty good shot. Right. So I could hit this where I hit a little behind it, I caught the ground a little behind it, I caught it on the upswing, it still got up in the air. Dead, yeah, that's right. Okay, but now, now we got to figure out how do we start working on catch the ball, catch the ground. Mm -hmm. So now what I've got here is I've got a tee in the ground. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a swing here, and what I want my swing to do, I, no balls, I'm just going to try to make the swing, I'm going to make the club brush the ground in front of this tee. Okay. So all I'm doing is now I'm getting control of where my club, where my circle hits the ground. So now I'm making it hit in front of the tee. Now I set up to the tee and I still make the club brush the ground in front of the tee. Yeah. All right. Now I put a ball on the tee. I've got another tee sitting there. Now the goal is to make the club hit the ground in front of the tee. I had another tee there, so I, if I hit this one out of the ground, I could see where my club hit the ground. So all I'm trying to do now is I'm working more on just controlling where my club brushes the ground. It's a separate skill. It's called angle of approach. Yeah. Now, I, I have people get in a bunker and I have them draw a line, or on the grass here, I just have them draw a line in the grass. They can take this, just draw a line. Mm -hmm. And then I have them set up and just make swings where they practice making the club. See how the club's hitting right on that line? Yeah. 
So now you start getting control of the circle that your club is swinging on. Now, Mike, is there something that would be kind of something that you see a lot that kind of acts as some interference in somebody get, making a consistent low point? Because this is like a, an external task, right? Like we're just trying to get it in front. Yeah, What's a normal thing that you see that really interrupts people from getting a good low point? For sure, the internal problem is the people think that they're trying to lift the ball in the air. Okay. And so what happens is they stay back on their right side and they're trying to get the club under the ball to lift it in the air. Because one of the first things in golf that people do, kind of the, the vicious spiral, is everyone dribbles it at first. That's just getting it in the air is, is the first struggle. Right, and yeah. that's because yeah. if I take this club and I go one, two, three, four dots up in the face, and I put a dot right there in the center of the face, and I say, okay, now here's the goal in this game on pretty much every shot is to put that dot on the back of that ball. Mm -hmm. all right now when I do that, and all of a sudden somebody takes the club now and they turn the club around, and they look at that and they say, well, I have to put that dot on the back of the ball. See, if I do this and I try to do that and lift it in the air, oh, yeah. I can't put that dot on the back of the ball. You hit the, the leading edge or maybe the first group. Right, so yeah. I can't do it. So if I say put that dot on the back of the ball, now this is where we start with little shots. So now if I put that dot on the back of the ball, what does the ball start to do? So if I put the dot on the back of the ball, what does the ball do? It gets in the air. Mm -hmm. Why does it get in the air? Well, it gets in the air because of the loft in the face. So now people with that dot, the, the task is to put the dot on the back of the ball. Mm -hmm. When the dot catches the back of the ball, the loft of the club gets the ball in the air. Yeah, that's cool. And that's where I start with people right there. Then they start to see how the ball gets in the air. Once their brain goes, oh, the ball gets in the air because I catch the ball on the face and the ball runs up the face to get in the air. Right. So now the task in your brain is to catch the ball on the face, not lift the ball up in the air. Yeah. That's the biggest reason that people struggle hitting what you would call down on the ball or having the club bottom out in front right. of the ball because they think... Because they see it dribble a few times and then they think, well, man, I want this thing to go in the air. So they do like... Exactly. Okay. So they're thinking, okay, I want to get the ball in the air. So they try to lift it in the air and that causes that one. And they go, I got to get under the ball. No, you actually have to try to catch the ball on the face. Mm -hmm. If you catch the ball on the face, if that dot catches the ball on the face, what does the ball do? It gets in the air. Right. And so that's one of the first tasks that I start out with. It was with that dot on the face. Right. Showing people just catch the ball, put that dot on the back of the ball. And once they put that dot on the back of the ball, they'll hit it fairly solid and the ball gets in the air and they go, oh, so that's what I'm trying to do. And mm. as soon as your brain, which is the taskmaster, understands the task, yeah. then a lot of the other things go away. Our industry has been terrible at defining the correct tasks. Yeah, yeah. You know, we, we define a lot of keep your left arm straight, keep your head, all those things, but they're terrible tasks. If you start dis defining the right task, then your brain, being a taskmaster, eliminates anything and everything not relevant to the task. Mm -hmm. So if it's put the dot on the back of the ball as the task, you're not going to hang back here and try to get underneath because you can't put the dot on the back of the ball. So your, your brain starts saying, well, if that's what I've got to do, it starts doing a lot of the other things that you would like it to do automatically. So golf is a game about what the ball does, and more than anything else, what the ball does is what the face does. That's what it comes down to. Yeah. So uh, I think that's a great uh, step by step that uh, Mike gave you. If you're interested in learning more and getting real good detail on how to do this, uh, along with uh, uh, specific instruction and then also connect with Mike and all that other stuff is available at MalaskaGolf.com. Really great full website that has all this stuff on it. And uh, also Be Better Golf has a promo code for it. You can get a discount there. So click the subscribe button to this video and welcome to golf and hope you uh, stick around. See ya. Bye.